Okay. So here's what we got. Okay. This is a mobile first app. Okay. And it's basically meant the, the user um, is a UX designer. And what this is, is that companies send people to go to design thinking boot camps to learn how to do design thinking to bring it back to their company. And what happens is when they come back, they can't figure out how to apply it to real business problems. And so what we're trying to do is make them an app that would be sort of a coach so that when they come back to their company and they're trying to teach the engineers and the PMs and everybody how to use design thinking in a different way, they have kind of memory prompts. And so what we're, what we're trying to do is um, give them a little bit of a, of a journey where if they get stuck, they know what to do next. So let me just recap this. So you're essentially creating the app that is allowing people that have learned design thinking to use those tools and like recap it? Yeah, so when they come back to the company, because I don't know if you've done this, but if you've gone to those boot camps, like everything is so crystal clear, and then you come back and you have a real problem and you're like, oh, oh wait, how do I make this process work for this problem? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get really stuck, especially when it's not a designer, because sometimes they'll send a PM to go learn this, and then they come back and it's, it's kind of new to them and foreign, and then they don't know how to apply it. Right. So we're looking for a kind of a pocket coach that they pocket could use. Coach. Um, to kind of help them when they get stuck because the other thing is you're standing in front of a room full of people your coworkers, and you get stuck and you can't figure out where to go next and so they kind of panic I see and which fields are these people usually like the call they're usually going to be um, Designers they're usually going to be either UX UI sometimes they're PMs um, Sometimes you do get business people where they just send a random business person and say you're gonna be our design thinking person so but normally they would have at least some design background um, but they're maybe just not completely clear on the design thinking process enough to, to deliver it to everyone else. So they're facilitating and they're trying to get their facilitation skills down. So they, they may have a certain level of comfort with the process, but then when they go to deliver it is when they get stuck. And this, we did um, user research and this was through asking people what happens and this was what came through is that it's not that they don't understand it or that they don't know how to do it, it's that they don't know how to apply it to a different type of problem. So they don't know how to apply design things to a different type of problem. Right. And this problem is specifically around the business or is around um, something they're dealing with the project or Anything. cross-functional? Okay. It's more about the process. So, okay. so when they go to the workshop, they understand it. Okay. And it's usually done with something more um, commonplace. Like they'll have you make a new kind of wallet. Or like if any of you have done like the Stanford boot camp, they'll have like, okay, we're going to um, do a different way of gift giving and you're going to design packaging that becomes a gift itself or something like that. But then when they come back and they try to apply it to a business problem, they're like, okay, I get how to make something out of out of paper, but how do I right. prototype do I when- to my job, essentially. Yeah, well, how do I prototype something that isn't physical and how do I test it and how do I? Uh -huh. So we're looking for ways to keep them on track to get back to the process. So just so we can like at least get to a point within 20 minutes, mm -hmm. can we just say right now, it, the most important thing is applying design thinking like this process to prototyping a, a solution to like a problem they have at work, like, yes. like something that's relevant to the project they're working on. Right, exactly, exactly. But that's not physical. Yes. Okay. Um, and we can even come up with a, with a problem if you want to make it clearer, like say, um, you know, they're, the person would be facilitating to create um, an HR app that helps them onboard people or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it's that kind of a problem, like more of an abstract problem. Mm. So it's an abstract problem like making onboarding for HR app? Yeah, or something like that. But the, but the, the, the point of the app itself is to walk them through the design thinking process, not to solve a specific problem. Okay. Yeah. so just. I'm hearing is essentially uh, an applicable toolkit with like what they've learned, but like the resources they can tap back in, into regarding design thinking. Exactly. So it's like, um, like you said, like a pocket coach, but um, just with the ideas like consolidated so that um, when they're trying to solve something, they're able to go back specifically to like, um, I know there's like a five step to, to like design yes. thinking, something yeah. like that, and yeah. then they can go to each idea. Right. Okay. Fair. So we'll just say for now, like, um, how many steps are there? Just five. For, okay, just for five. And what's the constraints in terms of like timeline? Does this need to be out by a certain amount of time? Um, 
is there like a amount of people that are working on this that need to launch? Like who are the stakeholders? I'm going to say it's a it's an unfunded startup. This is like okay. somebody's pet project. So there's mm -hmm. not a tight timeline. Um, okay. The constraints are more within the process itself because you have the D school's way of doing it, Google's way of doing it. Everybody has different variations. Mm -hmm. So you're also trying to make sure that it's applicable, but we're we're deferring kind of to the, the D school's way of doing it, the standard D school. And what is the current solution right now? There are no existing apps that are publicly available. There's one that's privately available that if you've taken their workshop, they will let you use it. But there's mm -hmm. literally not one that's publicly available. What everyone has is a deck of cards. Um, so mostly deck of cards. Yes, deck okay. of cards. Google's Google card. got one, mm -hmm. Stamper's got oh, one, okay, okay. Frog has one, they're, but they're all physical cards. Okay, I see. So let me just clarify users one more time. These are designers, PMs are not clear on design thinking, and specifically anywhere, right? Not a certain company, just anywhere who's been Any to. company. But they've had some okay. design thinking training, so they're not okay. complete newbies. Right, okay. And has there been, um, I guess, any interviews you've done in terms of like asking them right their current process? Like, what is like the most difficult uh, part of like applying um, the design thinking to whatever they're trying to solve? Like, is it like when they were trying to recall it a specific project? Like, what point? Like, can you just walk it's, me through? It's usually that when they set up for their, they're usually facilitating within their company, and when they they're setting up for it, they are they're feeling really confident. But then when they go to execute, they'll get stuck at a point. Like, they'll. Um, get to a certain point in the process like prototyping or something and then they don't know how to proceed and so then they're trying to flip through notes or flip through these cards and try to figure out what's next and so with an app we're hoping that we can lead them to those answers more easily mm. do you mind just walking me through like kind of um, a scenario where they're trying to start a project and try to apply this thinking and like what would happen just so i can like map out mm -hmm. or at least um, note where the pain point is okay so if we go back to the hr one uh -huh. so they've done their research uh -huh. that part is usually pretty straightforward for the hr app right yeah okay. yeah and they they're usually able to identify their user and their problems constraints those are all pretty straightforward uh -huh. and then um, user mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Would be. okay and then where they get stuck is that they try to start they, they can get through the brainstorming and they usually can kind of narrow it down to like a theme of like here's where we should focus our effort on trying to solve this problem and this is usually a PM or designer in like a brainstorm session to like mm -hmm. map yeah. out. Okay. And they're facilitating for their coworkers. So they've got a room full of people that may be other designers, oh, maybe engineers, maybe PMs, other business people. Uh-huh. And then and then they and then what happens is they can't figure out how to prototype it quickly. And they can't get people to work together. Like people kind of get the people that are not creative kind of stall mm -hmm. and they can't figure out how to lead them. And so, you know, there's some things you can do that are like icebreaker exercises. Uh -huh. So that's a tool they can use. Um, there are um, kind of prompts where you can get someone to do mini prototyping where they're just pro prototyping a little sliver of it, uh -huh. but they can't quite get the non-designers to figure out how to work the process and very often they can't figure out how to explain it to them either and they kind of freeze up and it's always at that same point that they they freeze up so they have, they're having a hard time leading non-designers specific, specifically that haven't been through design thinking yeah okay uh, and I think that we interviewed about a hundred plus designers and they all kind of had that same mm, sticking point yeah so leading non-designers essentially okay. yeah and then like I guess after this like what do they do like how do they try to like ameliorate the situation like do they do a google search or do they like re like go back and read the document um, that they had through group camp like how do they try to fix it right, right yeah. now yeah so so some of them had their physical notes from whatever uh -huh. workshop they attended uh -huh. some of them had the cards the pre-made cards that you can buy uh -huh. Um, and what generally what they say happens is when they're searching through notes and they're searching through these cards their confidence just kind of falls apart and so everybody's standing there looking at them and they're right. like uh, uh, I don't know how to do this so we're trying to figure out a way to keep things flowing okay. at that point
and like IDEO has a little book that's on um, you know this process but what I've noticed is none of these have a good way to if you get stuck here do this oh, there's not a, there's not an if then scenario to solve these problems like they're giving you all the tools they're just not telling you how to overcome obstacles pain points so really, I guess these two. So what I'm hearing is. I think that's the limit. We don't record that part. What is it? Don't see in the video. Oh, okay. okay. This part you can see though. Yeah, okay. little, yeah. Okay. This batch. So just to so it's just to summarize. Thanks. Just to summarize, it's um. Those pain points. Difficulty leading non designers who've not been through the training. Right. And then pulling up or um, specifically recalling a certain step, right? Like a yeah, certain on step. The fly. Like okay. kind of being, yeah. And I know we already said there is an app, so I can kind of quickly just skim over the brainstorming part. But are you, are you thinking like a mobile app or like yeah, mobile just app. like the device, um, like a mobile website or like specifically have you thought about that? Or I think kind of app like because that? usually when they're delivering, they're going to be in front of a room full of people, so they need to be able to pull it out quickly. So I think the the mobile app is the way to go on that. Okay, so you wouldn't be open to like, per se, like a mobile website? It could be, I mean, it's a possibility. Um, okay, let me just list that for now. And then the fourth thing was, our third thing would be, um, you wouldn't be open to something like a uh, Google Doc or things that you could like share internally with the teams? Um, I think that's part, part of the problem is that everything that exists now is a document like that. Oh, I see. And it, it's just too hard to get through on the fly like that. Okay. So from um, what I'm hearing is the mobile app and, and the mobile website is the way to go, but the mobile app would probably be the most like amount of effort and mm -hmm. it seems like maybe the most impact, but the website would be uh, also a lot of effort, but maybe equal. In fact, is this something that yeah. you would be open to like um, adjusting regarding like, you know, the cost or is it just something you want to stick to? Like, sure. It'd be interesting know? to see how that would play out. Yeah. Okay. Because that might be a viable solution. Uh, Okay, so, so I don't have that much time. Usually, I would like delve a little bit deeper in like which one would be the high impact or low effort and all that stuff. But uh, how much time? Six minutes. Yeah, so I'll just go ahead and draw some wireframes of what I think could like resolve something like this. Um, but usually, this step would be you would use it within like the last twenty minutes or twenty five minutes. I don't start drawing until then because. Um, what they really want to see is like how you think through it, all the things and like how you decide which one to go for with not really so much about the wireframes themselves. Um, however, sometimes they do specifically want to ask you like um, how you would approach something in terms of like the visual aspect of it just to make sure that you understand that. But usually at a higher level, they don't care about this as much. So depending on where you're interviewing, but most cases, again, it's and this process. is usually going to be about an hour process, so the yeah. wireframing is about 40 minutes in, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say so. Um, the thing that is pretty common is that uh, most people come to around to the same wireframes, so around the same like ideas. Uh, so it's not really like so much the solutions that like no one's ever thought of. It's more they just want to see how you got here. Yeah, how you think. Yeah, right. because um, I had this one director interview me, and he had many people that came to like similar solutions as I did, and their team also came to like similar solutions. So it wasn't like I was saying anything out of ordinary, but he just wanted to make sure that I was thinking through it. How you got from there to there, yeah. Exactly. Like yeah. I explored um, different ideas, possibilities, and understand that there is like. Um, impact and effort and like there are certain constraints with each idea and uh, make sure I didn't jump right into like oh let's create a mobile app because um, you asked or because I think it's a great idea it's like well you can't just create a mobile app in, in a business right yeah. mm -hmm. okay so just for the sake of time I'm gonna draw some wireframes again um, uh, just know that these are just gonna be pretty rough ideas um, so you mentioned 
let's see, that, um, difficult time, uh, difficulty leading non-designers with no design thinking, specifically. So, I guess, uh, one aspect of it is you could do this for non-designers, right? Mm -hmm. So, this could be something that non-designers are able to maybe refer to as well. Um, and you said there are five steps, so, okay. Um, so perhaps the simplest thing is a video website um, collecting information or sessions that people have gone through and the non-designers can reference that. Um, they're able to like share that. That could be a one wireframe idea. Mm. Let's see. So aside from that, there could also be there could be like a section with like notes that they are able to share with the non-designers who have missed out on these certain uh, workshops. And on the designer side, them creating the content is also helping them remember these things. So maybe the designers themselves have like a design thinking like profile where they're able to create their own content and like let's say um, upload things that they've learned. So not only are they able to track things that um, the experience that they've had, but also writing down these things or helps them um, recall uh, some of the information they've learned. So this could be like videos they've recorded of them talking or running different um, sessions or questions. Let's see, documentation. So that could be one of the ideas. I know you mentioned uh, there's already a lot of resources out there, so that's why it's hard to do this kind of information, but um, I think something like this could be more personalized. So instead of it being somewhere you reference to that someone's already made, it's like your own material. So when you create your own content, it not only helps you remember things as well, but maybe it's a way that um, is able to be um, digest for the other party. Like someone that, for example, works with you and you're telling them uh, information that you've learned, maybe they're more willing to listen to that than you know just a document referencing it to like anybody on the website. So that could be one possible solution, um, personalization. Another one that's pretty broad is Maybe there's like step-by-step -step, um, breakdown. So, so maybe there's like little like guide, like these are like quick access to resources of like different steps. So they're able to like shortcut ways and then within Within each of um, the steps, they could have like uh, consolidated um, information, like uh, summary, like what difficulties other people usually experience, like just the very condensed but concise information. So it's not, um, you're not spending there reading it for like 10 minutes, it's just three, four minutes, a quick glance, and you're able to see like bullet points. And then maybe if they really wanted to go further, there's like an expert at the level at the very bottom that um, is able to like go in really more detail. But then there is like sort of a uh, like cognitive effort hierarchy. So first summary is the easiest point. You, you just need to like recall like a term. Then it's, okay, like what are other people experiencing? Like what are the specific scenarios? Maybe even like a Q&A section that other people have went through. Like, hey, like um, I haven't really had a hard time apply this because the client um, doesn't understand this and this and this. And then maybe that is, Okay, okay, great. Uh, I could just finish three more wireframes. Um, and then the last part would be just like experts in the area talking about things. So it just, uh, again, cognitive effort around that. So it's an app that you're able to reference quickly or take time to delve deeper if you wanted to. So there is like that freedom to choose. Mm. Another thing that could be 
this is like very out of the box idea and maybe you just uh have someone that you really connected with in the design thinking workshop and you want to book their time so maybe they already have um, slots like um, for example like refresher course or like uh, or like personal hours that you can like book like 15 minutes um, so let me go with it so first you book like 30 minutes of your time and you're able to like pay them a certain amount of money like let's say you before you get in the meeting you're like okay I'm so stressed um, like nervous because my team is like going to be like Basically, everyone's going to be watching me, so I just want to make sure I'm on the right track. And then you book a slot with this coach type of person, and then you kind of review everything, and then you go into a meeting, like, fresh and prepared. Or maybe they also have, um, like I said previously, they have... Uh, instead of, like, just slots, they have, like, personalized content, so... Maybe it's like, instead of it just being design thinking as the material you just like anyone can write about, maybe it's like a specific person you want to follow. So it's like a design thinking community. And they have like content, like specific scenarios, like, hey, I saw this problem at Lyft. This is how we did it, right? So they have company affiliation. So then there's like different industries where you're using design thinking and it's more specific than um, just the, one, two, three, four, five, um, generic like IDA, um, try to diagnose solution, things like that. It's just like really specific to the problems that they're trying to solve. And lastly, hmm. Hmm. I did mention a mobile website. And this is probably the cheapest option, but maybe there's just a quiz you, you go through and you talk about like, what's the team size, experience, you know, learning, like maybe you just got out of the boot camp, team, size, like problems. And then it takes you to like, maybe a page results. Maybe like a specific page or like, information and then it can also take you to a community of people that have experienced something similar so yeah that would be uh, my quick solutions to that <laughs> you want me to critique it yeah okay. go ahead so i think you understood the business problem really well and ironically this is exactly the solution that oh, i came up with. really so when you started writing it i was like that looks familiar <laughs> but you also came up with some really interesting um other solutions that i yeah. hadn't thought of like referencing other companies and bringing in um, case studies because yeah. i think that would help people a lot if yeah. they're prepping to be able to look at that and understand how it applies in the real world mm -hmm. um being able to to hire an expert to give you some help beforehand right was another one that I it didn't occur to me, but it's a good one. I think it's a really good solution. Um, I like that the participants would use it as well. I was really thinking of it more as being specifically for facilitators, but that would actually take load off, cognitive load off of the facilitator, mm -hmm. so it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, and it addresses that, that issue of like, when they kind of panic mm -hmm. um, really well. So I think you, I think you had a really good understanding of the business problem we were trying to solve and you kind of pushed past uh, the main solution and came up with all these other things too that were really innovative. So I think it, you, you addressed really well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, things I could definitely improve. Um, I, you know, I, I can just start off and say yeah, what yeah. I think I could improve. So I definitely, when I was going through this, there was a part where I was stuck in between like the pain point and the brainstorming. So I think earlier on I could have asked more like, why are you specifically doing an app? And instead of going with just like app, I wrote that down. I think I was a little bit too married to this idea, and I think I should have asked, like, um, are you, you actually sure? did ask. Oh, okay. Yeah, the mobile website was a good compromise, too, mm, that I, okay. again, hadn't thought of, so.